Right, this is a lecture on special relativity and it's on finding the velocity between two events. So it could be either time like, space like, or null, and that's what we're going to be looking at. So if those words aren't included in your in what you're looking for, then I don't think there's going to be much use. Right, first off the Lorentz equations. This these are the Lorentz equations and they're for relating two frames to each other. So we can say uh, if we have one frame f which has t and x and another frame f hat which has t hat and x hat we can relate them like this so we have t2 hat minus t1 hat is equal to gamma where gamma is 1 minus v squared over c squared to the power of minus a half so it's 1 over the square root of this times t2 minus t1 plus v over c squared times x2 minus x1 and the x2 are related similarly, which is x2 hat minus x1 hat equals gamma x2 minus x1 plus v times t2 minus t1. Close in brackets. Right, now if you want to calculate the distance between these two points, uh, between two points which are given in the form ctx, so here we've got ct1, x1, and ct2, x2, these are our two points, then we're given this here, which is a squared interval between them, which is uh, s squared, which equals c squared, times c is the uh, speed of light, uh, t2 minus t1 squared minus x2 minus x1 squared. Now, we can say from what value we get here, that if s squared is a positive value, then we say it's time-like. And we can remember it's called time-like because this time part will be greater than the space part, so it's time-like. And we can solve this by saying that x2 hat minus x1 hat is equal to zero. And we, we use this in this line of the Lorentz equation uh, and solve it for v to find the velocity. Now again, if it's null, I think I've got one too many l's there actually. If it's, it's null, if we get s squared is equal to zero, so the time will be equal to the space. And we say it's space-like if s squared is negative. So we've got the space part is a bit too big, so it takes it negative. And then for here, instead of the x, we let the t2 minus t1 hats equal zero in this equation, and we solve it for v. Right, so we've got three examples coming up, one for each of them. We're given the coordinates of two, uh, some pairs of events uh, in the form tx. So we can see it's not in the form ct x, so we're going to have c is equal to 1 to make it in that form. We want to find the velocity relative to f of an inertial frame f hat. So I've done just tx to make it easy for us because if c is what it is, which is 3 times 10 to the 8, it gets quite difficult. So first we want to find the squared interval between them, which is the t2 minus t1 squared and that. And we get 7 squared minus 5 squared, which is 24, which is positive. So we say it's time-like. And if it's time-like, we let the x2 hat minus x1 hat equal 0. <coughs> so we've got this part of the Lorentz equation. And let that equal 0. Then this gamma, we can just divide by gamma, so we can get rid of the gamma. And we're left with this. We arrange to, we arrange to get the velocity v, which is minus x2 minus x1 over t2 minus t1, which equals minus five-sevenths, and that's the velocity of f relative to f hat. These are some more events, we've got 0, 4 and 3, 7, so we find the squared interval, which happens to be 0, so we say this is null, so there is no velocity between the two events. The final one is 4, 3, 7, 7, and we want to find the squared interval, which we're getting as minus 7, which means it is space-like, because our space is bigger. And so now we've just got to substitute in t2 hat minus t1 hat equals 0 into our Lorentz equation here. And we can set, well, we can get rid of the gamma, which we've got the 0 because we can divide by that disappears over here. The c squared, we already know we're using our c, c is equal to 1. 
so we get our v is here and so the velocity is minus three quarters hope that helped